Hi everybody, Levi Clay here and I'm back again to start a new series here on YouTube called Hero Worship. This is something I've been playing around with for quite a while now and I thought, what the hell, let's get it going. So if you do enjoy this, please do hit that like button, share, subscribe, tell all your friends, drop a comment below. I'm reading all of them, happy to engage with you guys. Um, yeah, you get the idea. So the concept here is very simple. I get to talk about a guitar player, a musician that has inspired me uh, more than you probably are aware of. And I get to talk about some of their music and why they are somebody that you should explore. And then with that, if you go into the description below, I've created a custom Spotify playlist so you can check out a bunch of their music that has inspired me. So hopefully these videos will be an avenue for you into artists that you might be a little bit more unfamiliar with. And of course, if it's an artist that you are familiar with, then we get to talk about you know why we love the artist as much as you do, which is great. So yeah, like I say, comment section. Anyway, today we are going to start with uh, a bigger influence in my playing, actually, and somebody that I don't get to talk about as much as I would like to. But actually, when you look at the signs, they're kind of all there for this guy being a huge influence on me. And that's Mr. Ron Thal, Mr. Bumblefoot. I say Mr. Bumblefoot, Bumblefoot. Uh, actually, in researching this video, I realized that it's actually Ronald J. Blumenthal, uh, which, yeah, that's news to me. I guess it makes sense, Blumenthal. It's a nice, strong Jewish name, so cool. Ronald J. Blumenthal. I, I, I kind of want to do one of those Wikipedia fact fiction type things with, with Ron and ask, is that is that correct? Because I look at that and I'm like, how did I how did I never know that? But yeah, apparently Blumenthal, cool, why not? Better known as Bumblefoot. Now, if we look at his history as a player, Ron came into prominence around the decline of the high-tech rock guitar thing, the instrumental guitar thing. He came into uh, popularity via Mike Varney of Shrapnel. Now, Mike Varney, an incredibly important figure in the history and evolution uh, of and um, popularization of high tech guitar. Both him and Mark Varney, uh, who was doing Legato Records, they brought a lot of guitar players into the public eye. Mark dealing with, uh, sorry, Mike dealing with more of the rock guys and Mark dealing with the fusion guys. So Mike introduced guys like, you know, Malmsteen and Paul Gilbert and Richie Cotson and Greg Howe. All of these guys came to prominence because of their features in Spotlight, and then he, he brought them in to do albums on Shrapnel. Now, Ron did release his first two albums for Shrapnel, The Adventures of Bumblefoot and Hermit. Now, both of those were released under the Ron Thal name, so they're technically Ron Thal albums. From there, when he left Shrapnel and started doing his own thing, he changed to using Bumblefoot as an actual band name, and then eventually that becoming uh, his moniker. He would be known as Bumblefoot, and why not? So those first two albums, they're definitely worth checking out. Uh, the first one in particular is solely, uh, solely, completely instrumental, and if you're into the instrumental thing, yeah, it's a cool album. Uh, there's great stories behind it. It was, you know, Ron did everything himself, I believe, on that record uh, in his little home studio. And it kind of sounds that way. It's not got the polish of a modern album. There's like a punk attitude to everything on there, which is really cool. Um, the production is, you know, we'll say questionable by 2019 standards, but yeah, for the time, definitely, you know, uh, an, an ear twister. And there's tons of great songs on that. I really would uh, recommend you check that one out. There's a tab book for that album that he made that goes into every single little detail of how he did everything on the album, every single guitar part, all of the weird overdubs, it's all documented. So I... I own that somewhere. It's in my house somewhere. I cannot find it. Um, but yeah, check that out. But for me, Ron and his music is all about songs, singing. It's all about influences. So when you look at Ron's influences, you're talking about Kiss, you're talking about Queen or Led Zeppelin or the Ramones, right? Songwriters. Yeah, cool. He can play guitar. He's an incredible guitar player. But for him, it always seems that the guitar playing comes after the song and he will use the guitar playing to spice up a song. Uh, and for me, that's where you start using words like genius, right? Um, I'll quote Guthrie on this one. It's not a direct quote, I'm paraphrasing, but he often says that the word genius is overused. We use it to uh, compliment anyone that's any good at anything. Uh, but when it comes to Ron, the man is a genuine genius. And I, I totally get that. Like he genuinely is kind of next level understanding of music and application of things, incredibly creative about the way he plays the instrument and the, the musical ideas that he can coax out of it. Truly uh, a very inspiring individual. 
So if you want to dig into the Bumblefoot discography a little bit more, there's Hands was his first Bumblefoot album. You've got 911. That is chock full of fretless playing. Um, so that's a, a cool one to check out. Uncool, I've got the list here so I don't forget any of them. The Forgotten Anthology, Normal and Abnormal, those two albums, are um, those are my favourites without uh, any doubt there. Uh, there's the Barefoot EP, and then in 2015 he released Little Brother Is Watching. There's also a collection of singles that he released. Uh, I forget what year that was, but he was exploring the idea of you know releasing singles rather than an album. And there's some there's some cool songs in there, Invisible, and um, yeah, check, check those out. The Pink Panther theme he did during that. Anyway, so let's dig into why I am so inspired by Ron. So aside from pointing out the obvious, the songwriting side of things, being able to focus on writing a song rather than being able to use a song as a vehicle to show off your guitar playing, um, when it comes to his guitar playing, it's, like I say, incredibly creative. Now, I met Ron for the first time, uh, I forget how old I was, but it was when I had just moved to London. Chinese Democracy, the Guns N' Roses album, had just come out and Bumblefoot was the guitar player in the band at the time. Now, Axel didn't want to do any real proper promotion of the album, so Vigier, who Ron plays, um, took the opportunity to put on a Bumblefoot clinic, and I went down to that. I was really keen on seeing him, checking him out, and asking him some questions about some of the things that he does. And uh, yeah, he was he was very entertaining. He was very funny. I'll never forget him sitting down and in his strange fluffy Russian hat and talking about his voice and apologizing for the way he sounds and describing himself as a mix between Yogi Bear and Sylvester Stallone, which got a laugh from the room. But it's it's totally true. You know, Ron has a very unique sound about his uh, guitar playing but also his voice as he describes on the song rockstar for a day he says uh, but i've got a face that's made for radio and a voice that's made for i don't know but you love me anyway which is absolutely true it's just so unique it's it's not a radio voice but it's a it's a voice and anything unique is you know good in music it gives you a bit of identity so after meeting him there uh, i got to play my first vigier there and the vi the vigier that i played on that day i now own that is my number one guitar still all these years later I, I love that guitar I didn't buy it then by the way it took me like five years to be able to buy that guitar and uh, she's very precious to me now my, my ruby weapon but yeah it was very inspiring to meet Ron there and uh, I would go on to want to learn a lot more about what he was doing and this is where we get to the real inspiration so as everybody watching this channel will know most of my work comes from transcription I listen to music and write it down for a living that's my job basically and I love it. Generally speaking, if you listen to something as a guitar player, if you can play a little bit, you'll have a good understanding of how it's being done. If you think of the intro on ACDC's Back in Black, bum, da da dum, da da dum, da 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 da, -da, -da you can imagine how that feel is being played, right? Um, if you think of the Hotel California solo or Stairway to Heaven or whatever it happens to be, uh, you can, generally speaking, hear these ideas and phrases and go, I've got a rough idea of how that's going to be played. If it's pentatonic and you play with a lot of pentatonic, you'll have a much better idea than if you hear George Benson playing some super lockery and stuff. If you're not exposed to it, yeah, you, you've got a, a much lower chance of being able to work it out, right? Well, the thing with Ron is time and time again, his level of creativity allows him to come up with these things that are just so far behind my, beyond my comprehension that I can't work out how it's being played. Now I should point out, I can usually work out what the notes are, that's never a problem, much like a piano player would, right? I could write out the notation for what's being played. But the mystery with him is cool, this is what he's playing, but how the hell is he actually doing it? And time and time again, it's not like once or twice, I can give you endless examples in his music of I don't know how he's doing that. And to me, that's extremely exciting. Um, that could be on anything from, uh, let's think, the solo on Turnaround, right? I absolutely love this guitar solo. The first time I heard it, I was like, that sounds amazing. I don't know how he's doing it, though. So, huh. I had to ask Ron. I had to both ask him and then watch videos of him explaining it before I really understood, oh, okay, that kind of makes sense. Still can't do it, though, all these years later. Um, let me play a clip of that. So that solo sounds like this. Now, 
Now, to me, that's absolutely insane. I absolutely love that solo. And the more you dig into his vocabulary, the more you're going to find examples like that. If you look at the song Rockstar for a Day, which is also on the album Normal, uh, the thing that jumps out to me in this song is, aside from it being a great song, sure, uh, there's a fill after the first verse, uh, after the first chorus, sorry, that... I don't know if this was planned or if he wrote this specific part, but I know when I met him for the first time and I asked, he thought about it for a second and was like, oh yeah, okay, I know the film that you're talking about. And then he played it. So he, all those years later, he, he still kind of knew what was going on in his uh, insane mind when he uh, when he came up with them. So this is an incredible fill. Again, probably going to give this one to my uh, Patreon guys as a transcription challenge this month because it will drive them insane. I've never transcribed this one myself either. I know what he's doing, but still can't do it. So it sounds like this. super cool right it's a combination of sort of harmonics and there's high notes and there's percussive stuff like how's he doing it guys do you do you have any idea it's just have you ever heard anything like that the answer is probably no right uh, let's think of another example so if i think of the song abnormal from the abnormal album uh, before the guitar solo kicks off there is a, a crazy chromatic octave displaced idea that is just absolute insanity it sounds like Chaos, absolute chaos. Uh, very much like Buckethead when he does his weird eight finger tapping thing that sounds like uh, Kaiser Nankaro, is that pronounced correct? Uh, all of the, the stuff he did with cutting up tape and Bumblefoot, uh, Buckethead would imitate that in his way. To me, this sounds a lot like that. This is absolute craziness. How is it being done? I know now, but the first time I heard this, pff, your guess is as good as mine, guys. And of course, Ron is a master. And when I say master, I don't mean, you know, in the in the loose sense. I mean literally a master of the fretless guitar. No one plays fretless guitar quite like Ron does. Uh, there are tons of great examples of him playing fretless. The example I wanted to play would, of course, be like Shackler's Revenge on the uh, uh, Chinese Democracy album, which, for the record, I love. Chinese Democracy is probably my second favorite Guns N' Roses album. To be fair, it's not really a Guns N' Roses album, but it's a great album. If you put aside the Guns N' Roses name, it's full of incredible material. And uh, yeah, Ron is all over that. So uh, I would play Shackler's Revenge, but I really don't want the copyright strike from Axel's people. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a clip from the song Ray Gun from the 911 album. And uh, yeah, it's just an example of some of the crazy sounds that he'll coax out of this peculiar instrument. <laughs> I could honestly do this all day, just picking out all these little clips of cool little guitar moments on Ron's albums. But like I say, I think the better thing to do would be for you to drop down into that uh, description below and check out my Spotify playlist, listen to a bunch of his music and see if you can find some of those crazy guitar moments. But I think, or at least I hope, what you're going to really take from listening to those is the thing that's cool about Ron's music is the songs. He writes good songs, nice chord progressions, nice melodies, all tied together. And then, like I say, the guitar playing is just the icing on top of that. Of course, if you want to get into the crazy stuff, it is there. Listen to songs like Guitars Suck or Guitars Still Suck or I Can't Play the Blues or all of those songs like that. Anytime you hear him bust out his thimble, he has a thimble that he wears on his finger and so he can tap above the pickups and get obscenely high notes. It's, it's insane the level of creativity that he has brought to the table. Um, but again, the fact that he's not pushed himself as a solo artist, he's somebody that wants to write songs and produce music, which, uh, yeah, will always be inspiring to me. And uh, yeah, as you probably got from that, Ron was single-handedly the reason I went to play Vigier guitars. When I was looking for my own identity and was tired of playing the guitars that everyone else was playing, I thought to myself, cool, I need something completely original. Let's play whatever Ron's playing. <laughs> Not quite that, but there was something, there was comfort in that. There was, I can form my own identity with these guitars that not everyone is playing. And that's 
Ron down to a T, right? Having said that, uh, as in if you look at his history, he has some absolutely insane guitars. Of course, there's his double neck um, fretless and, and fretted, but people often forget the actual bumblefoot guitar that he had, where when you push the tremolo arm down, the wings on this bumblebee foot would open up. Um, just absolute insanity. The man has come up with some very strange guitars over the years. There was one where he uh, he took all the frets off and then put, uh, was it quarters? pennies whatever um new york new york american currency all over the neck and then polyfilled it uh epoxy resined it so he had a essentially a fretless guitar um, and this was a long time before he was playing the the vigier fretless so he's always been you know pushing the boundaries and trying to do creative things and yeah i find that incredibly inspiring so like i said i would encourage you to go and check out some of his music he is awesome he's an awesome musician he's also an awesome guy I had the opportunity to hang out with ron many times now and uh yeah c cannot say a bad word about him he's just an inspiration to me and i hope that he can be as much as an of an inspiration to me to you as he was and still is to me. I hope you listen to some of his music and enjoy it. If you want to dig into him a little bit further, I actually did a full interview with Ron for Guitar Interactive magazine a couple of years ago. I'm sure you can find that on YouTube somewhere, some clips of it there. That was cool. I got the opportunity to play with a man for quite a while and uh, yeah, pick his brain so you can dig into that and uh, learn a little bit more about his um, you know, his history and what he uh, what he's all about. An absolute legend of the scene. Uh, yeah, so what do you guys think? Are you a fan of Ron's playing? Have you heard of Ron before? Is this a completely new one to you? Or uh, do you maybe not like him? Cool, if you don't like him, awesome. Tell me why. I'm happy to uh, to listen to you. You're not going to change my mind, but it's always nice to uh, hear other people's opinions. I went a bit Stephen Crowder there, didn't I? Um, you're not going to change my mind, but I'm, <laughs> yeah, like I said, I'm really happy and interested to see what you do and don't like about him. So let me know in that comments section below. Uh, yeah, and finally, I should actually say that, you know, I'll try and get Ron on the channel at some point, see if I can do another interview with him, because uh, he's an interesting and funny guy, and I'm sure there's a lot of cool stuff that he could share with us. So finally, I just want to say a huge thank you to these people over here. These are some of my supporters over on Patreon.com. Um, they make my videos better. I can use the money that I get on Patreon to make my videos better. You guys won't really be able to tell this right now, but I'm not dying right now. And that's because thanks to these people over here, I have been able to upgrade my lights that I have in my studio and I no longer have big halogen bulbs. I've got these nice LED bulbs. So they give me lots of light, but they also don't cook me. They don't turn this room into an oven. And uh, yeah, that's nice. It means I can film for hours and hours and not actually want to die. So thank you very much for your support over there, guys. If you would like to join us over on Patreon, you can do so for as little as a dollar. And uh, it's all appreciated. So check us out by clicking this button up here. If you don't want to do that, of course, that's absolutely fine too. Just subscribe to the channel by clicking this button down here. Tell all your friends about the video. Comment, share. It all helps. And uh, lastly, you can check out two more videos. One of them will be mine and one of them will be one of Ron's. So check it out. You know, let him know I sent you, let him know that I'm thinking of him, and uh, yeah, fingers crossed we'll have him on the channel soon. So, much love guys, and I will see you for another video in the future. Laters.